Yeah, it's when see Sally talks to Snickers or I something. know it's April 1st, but I'm not fooling. The title is uh -huh. not a joke. I talked to Sneeko. And I gotta be honest, I had butterflies in my tummy. I was more excited to talk to him than I would be to talk okay. to Santa Claus. Now, I know this will be coming as a shock to a lot of you, a bit of a jump scare, so I hope you're sitting down so it doesn't knock you off your feet. Jump scare? Sneeko yeah. and I have not been on the best of terms recently. Yeah. We've tried our best to keep it a secret and handle it behind closed doors, but unfortunately, it's bled into the public eye. And you know what? By golly, I'll say it with my whole chest for all to hear. We just haven't liked each other. We haven't seen eye to eye on many things. So our internet beef has become this fine Wagyu steak. It's It's been this very tasty, juicy bit of drama mm -hmm. between the two of us. It's really today, been this right? it finally boiled over and we Seems had like a conversation. Mm -hmm. And I want to show you some clips from it. He actually asked me to record, so don't think that this was some kind of one-party consent thing where I pulled okay. the wool over his eyes and pulled his fucking pants down to surprise him with a recording. Mm -hmm. He had actually asked me to. And I want to show you how this went, because it was actually a very interesting conversation we had. Uh, I want to tell you how we got there. It's because uh, last night I noticed Sneeko was raving about cuties on Twitter yet again, talking about how much yeah, he loves it and he'll always defend it. Yes. But then said that I wouldn't debate him on it. And this little nugget of cringe had me scratching the hair on my chin, confused. I wouldn't debate you on it. I would actually love to hear your side of things on how you could possibly excuse the blatant sexualization of the child actresses in the film. Now, I'm not a debater. I actually am not a fan of debates in general. I prefer mm -hmm. just general conversations as opposed to these like gotcha and uh, leading questions and traps and shit. I think that's not very conducive to actual understanding of different sides of arguments. So mm -hmm. I don't debate, but I was very willing to have this conversation. Yeah, that so out the conversation and I out to talk to him and he was more yeah, than willing more to talk point. about it. Yeah, no. So we did. We talked about cuties and even talked about all of our general grievances with each other. And this was a very different side of Sneeko. I went into this expecting him to be his standard, unhinged, like very animated, cartoonish self that I uh -huh. see in all of his content on Twitter and Rumble, I where know. he's doing these like temper tantrums and like throwing his ass in a circle and going wild, hog wild. But here, this was a very laid back, very calm and collected Sneeko, who was actually more than willing to concede on some of his points as well as see okay. different sides of situations. And I didn't expect that. And I'm very appreciative of that pleasant surprise as it's well. Team, so I went I into this with pretty low expectations. But after finishing our talk, I'm actually pretty curious to see where Sneeko goes next. Because, like I mentioned, there are some things that he just fully admitted. Like, maybe he was guilty of doing similar things that he criticized others for. And that he was going to be repurposing his message and changing things around to make it more conducive to positivity. So, overall, the whole conversation went in a totally different direction than I expected. Of course, he's still very passionate about some things and we still fought on quite a few things. And the reality is there's just a lot of things that I don't see eye to eye to him on with some of the things he talks about. But overall, I really walked away with a very different impression of Sneeko from this. Now, I know I'm blue you here, but one more thing that I think is important to mention, he has said that he's wanted to the debate bots. me over the last two weeks here. He even made this big hullabaloo on Twitter about how I ducked a debate with him on Aiden Ross' stream. Even though he had not replied to any of my DMs at that point, there was no debate scheduled between him and I. So that was just a blatant lie. I think he was just joking around about it and it missed the mark because people actually thought that I was avoiding him. Yeah. But he's not wrong in the fact that I really didn't want to have a conversation with him over the last two weeks because all of it was extremely geared towards hurt feelings. At least that's how I interpreted a lot of his statements. It seemed to focus more on me saying, saying, P.U., you stink, and him taking it as, he's canceling me, canceling me. There's not a whole lot of productive conversation that can come from that with me just explaining over and over again that I'm just insulting you, and that's the simple brass tacks of it. But over the last 48 hours, it really does feel like he's had this come-to-Jesus moment where he's recognized that I was never canceling him, I was making fun of him, he even issued an apology about bringing up my girlfriend and stuff like that, and has recognized that he has been off the mark on a lot of things recently as well. He also, like, apologized for being a cuck, which was a wild thing. He talked about how uh -huh. humbledery was a mistake, so it looks like he was never okay with it, even though for a time he did say everyone should try it. It looks like he's changed his perspective on that now looks back on it with a lot of regret, mm -hmm. which Maybe isn't was, surprising since those were not guess. some of his favorite to keep hearing. So that's not really a discussion we had. Uh, I think and have always said whatever happens between consenting adults in the bedroom is fine. As long as no one's getting fucking hurt, there's no like victims, it's consenting adults, you're good to do whatever makes you happiest. The reason I always talked about the cuckoldry is one, because fucking hilarious that a lot of his beliefs now go very much against his past of being open to watching his girl get fucked in front of him by multiple men on a couple occasions. And two, it was mm -hmm. illustrating a bit of ridiculousness with him being the moral authority on healthy relationships when he himself was in a very confusing one that he wasn't proud of yet still preaching that people should do it anyway that was the whole point behind it i wasn't trying to kink shame like a lot of people started accusing me of if you want to be a cuckold then be a proud one and be okay with it and comfortable in your own skin about it so 
it has seemed like he's been more receptive to real talk, and that's what we had. So let me go ahead and show you now. The first thing we talked about was cuties. This discussion okay. with you about cuties since I dropped that video back in 2020. <laughs> How time flies, man. Well, better late than never. So, have you seen the movie? Yeah, so uh, you mentioned you saw my video, so you know I didn't finish the movie. I physically couldn't. I found it just to be completely repulsive. Haven't you seen a lot of other movies that have repulsed you before? I watch horror movies. I watch movies that are provocative quite a bit. Yeah, but there's a. this is something I, I feel isn't being recognized. There's a difference between being repulsed by fiction, which is like horror movies, you know, that's not real, and being repulsed because there's real children doing sexual things. You can't fake that. The actresses were 11 to 13 years old. They were twerking. There were some that very is, yeah. gross scenes in there, and, like, the cameras would zoom in on their chest and their ass and their crotch, like... That's a very different kind of repulse. That's what we agree on. I don't agree that those scenes are good. I don't agree with the sexualization of children. I defend the movie because I defend the morality of the movie. And I think that most people that were disgusted have seen those clips. Mm -hmm. or didn't watch the movie, uh, like you. So that movie was taken out of context quite a bit. And people don't really see the moral of the movie, which is defending Islamic values. And also pointing out the very real what? problem that young girls have going on social media and doing these dances. I agree, Islam that connected to this. I agree that those scenes are repulsive. But I think you could be repulsed by TikTok and pretty much what young girls are doing on social media every single day as well. I think that people outraged at that film should also be outraged at everything that girls are doing now on Instagram, TikTok, and all these apps. Well, see, but here's the thing. So let's let's break it down to the very bare essentials. Can children consent? Can children consent? No, they can't. We agree. So, then, mm -hmm. so then why do you think it's excusable it's to exploit them after on. having them sign up for this film? If they, if you admit they can't consent, how can they possibly give the okay to be shaking their ass and having a camera all up in their shit while they're doing sexual things like that scene where she takes a picture of her vagina, the scene where they're doing literal, like, toying around with cam sites, like, that's very different. Like, no one is disputing the message, right? It's well, a I, I agree with the intention of the movie. I don't think that yeah. those scenes are good. That's what we completely agree on. But I think that that was an important movie to point out how many people get sucked into this world. I think I think that was needed. That movie was needed needed to be made. And I also don't think that that movie encouraged pedophiles to go and incite and look at these girls. I think that they're more likely to go on TikTok mm -hmm. and find girls that they're attracted to. I don't think that this really attracted people to these girls. Well, it's not like it's not like I'm here arguing that this movie created pedophiles, right? But what it did is it delivered a film that they would watch for totally different reasons than the message. Again, the message isn't something that I or pretty much anyone has an issue with. The message is, like you mentioned, the social media poisoning them, making them do the sexual things, which is a problem. But this movie contributes to it since it still used real children to sexualize them to showcase it. That's the issue. You didn't need it to be I children. I don't think it contributes to it because when you see girls doing this on TikTok, they don't know. I don't see girls doing it on TikTok, though, is the thing. Right? The only people that would are going to be the pedophiles. They would go and search that out. This movie was advertised on Netflix. No, that's with... not true. Every time I, I don't have TikTok on my phone, but once in a while before I was banned, I would go on there. And the first three videos would be the same thing that you see on Cuties. It's a, it's, and that's why I uninstall the app. That's why I, I don't have it on see my phone. Because it's directing you to those, to those images. Which is a problem. I'm not disagreeing that's a problem. But that doesn't make no, this we, film... We, we agree, but we just disagree that I think the movie was important to point out a flaw. Personally, I never empathized with girls being attracted, being directed to that site before I saw that movie. That really made me understand what it's like to be a girl and grow up in that age. I think we're getting... Yes, we agree that it is disgusting, but you are excusing it because you believe it highlights a very real issue, which it does. But it contributes to that issue by using children. They didn't have to use kids. Can like you recognize that, right? They could have no, used. They didn't have, no, they didn't have to use kids. But I also look at the director and I look at the moral movie, and I don't think that it was anything unsafe. And I don't think that the director had any bad intentions making it. So maybe it shouldn't have been as sexualized. But I defend the morality of the movie, and I also defend the effect that it had on me. When I watched that, that made me have a new perspective. But do you see why that's kind of? Jesus, sorry, that was my cat. Do you see why that's kind of concerning to hear, though? Because. In the time that I watched that film, there were unreal amounts of sexual scenes. In fact, the majority of the movie was them doing like the dance routines where they're smacking each other's ass, zoomed in on them, shaking their ass in the camera. There's that yes. scene where a security guard's like, what are you girls doing here? And they're like, we're dancers. He's like, prove it. So they start tw twerking for him and he's like, oh, great, get in here. Like that is a problem, no matter how you spin it. Again, the message is fine. There was never anything wrong with the message. And maybe the intention of the what, director what you, was... How would you tell the director to convey the, the message in a different way? You would just not use children. You could deliver the same message and you don't use children. The problem is... I don't they think it would be effective. I don't think it would be as effective. It's so unfortunate the, that it's misinterpreted, but I mean, you couldn't be able to have that effect and things, know how provocative bro. and how dangerous it is without using kids. Yeah, they, but, of course, the shots yes, probably yeah. did not need to be that bad, yes, but when I watched that, I was absolutely disgusted. And like I said, it, it changed my perspective. And what I'm surprised about is that you 
and you know having them do sexual things and it's horrible the, the film wanted to call that out and point a point a light at how horrible it is but doing so they used real 11 to 13 year olds and actually sexualized them thus it's a fucking horrible thing that they produced and by my definition and many people's definition is child porn that shouldn't be defended by any means now i wish sneeko would be able to just separate the message from the film because the message is fine that is something that you can applaud but not the film itself follow the narrative that's popular on social media but i don't see you ever directed at the problem do you agree that wokeness is one of the biggest problems that corrupts kids nowadays define wokeness Wokeness yes. is the liberal ideology is feelings over facts. I identify this way because I feel like it is Here it comes. there's no gender, nothing matters, I do as I want. Everything that's promoted on social media. Do you realize how no, you described is how you've lived your life for the last year? Like feelings over facts, for example. You champion bullying. You you think bullying needs to come back. I have never canceled you. Can you recognize that? I've I've actually always spoke out against deplatforming, if you've ever noticed. I spoke out against it. No, but it you also and... disingenuous. When I called out the sword board collage, you were like, these people just hurt my feelings. Most of those people actively advocated One for person. cancellation. Nick is not green, is the only person. True. That's not true. Ethan Klein celebrated and clapped when I was banned and said, good, finally this misogynist is banned. What happens on the internet, I understand. It's good to have back and forth. Bullying is good because it makes you have to develop your character in a different way. That's not why I was upset. I was upset mm. because a lot of these people were secretly happy yes, or secretly yes. hoping that I was going to get banned because they disagree with my ideology. Get there. But then why am I on that list when I've only ever spoke out against deplatforming? That seems like I'm there because I hurt your feelings. You didn't hurt my feelings. I thought it was funny because you do look like the rest of them. Okay. I, I don't understand how, but we're not yes, here to... Feeling to like a man. Yeah, yes. And after talking to Sneeko, it became clear that he really lives his life fearful of wokeness. He is constantly haunted by the woke boogeyman, like he's trapped in Luigi's mansion, but every ghost is woke. It's one of those things where every topic we started talking about always tied back to either cancellation or wokeness, which I think is pretty sad to be in that state yeah. of, I guess, unease, yeah, where he's yeah, always see. feeling as though woke is breathing down his neck it's haunting his dreams like freddy krueger but i'm gonna get into that in just a little bit more in a second i do want to mention that collage where he's claiming it's not people that hurt his feelings it's people that like advocated for his cancellation and shit which again i never did i have only ever made fun of him and insulted him or made fun of one of his friends that he felt the need to pick up the pick up the you know the white knight's armor to defend the honor of so I, under no circumstances, fit any of his definitions there, except for he thinks I look like the rest of the people there. Which I have still not, to this day, seen a single living, breathing human being that has said there is similarity between anyone on that collage. Fucking 30 people on that collage, and there is no similarity amongst any of them. All types of different backgrounds, faces, hair, everything. Beliefs, it's not even fucking close. I don't know what he's seeing there. Uh, maybe he's, like, face blind, so he sees everyone as, like, a default RuneScape character on Tutorial Island. I don't know. But anyway, back to the woke topic. I wanted him to define woke, and he gave me his definition of woke. To his credit, that was more than I would have expected because last time I saw someone try to define woke, it was a fucking disaster. But he clearly does have at least some belief on what wokeness is and what it means to him. Now, he asked me if I think that's the biggest problem facing the youth today. And I didn't really get to get a clear answer in there because he kept switching kind of rapidly. My answer is no. But I do think the biggest problem that's plaguing the youth today is the fact that kids feel forced to choose sides so early in life, before their brain has even had a chance to develop. Now, whether you want to subscribe to one side of the political spectrum or the other, you are always being forced down one yeah, path in this level of tribalism where you always have to blindly support that side and hate everything and everyone on the other. I think that shit sucks fuck. I think that's a horrible way of living life. And it leads to a situation that we see a lot now where people aren't friends with someone that don't share every single thing in common. For example, I have friends that I disagree with on many things, but we're still friends at the end of the day because we do have commonality and like yeah. personality and we have fun together. We don't need to agree on everything. And I wouldn't want that. I don't like echo chambers. And regardless of if you're on the woke side or the anti-woke side, you put yourself in an echo chamber no matter what. And both sides eat you alive if you so much as critique something about that side. It seems like it's constantly discouraged to think for yourself. You have to be fed your thoughts, whether that's being fed the thoughts that Sneeko hates or being fed the thoughts that Sneeko champions. It's all about their own idea, their ideas, and then you try and adopt them as your own, and any kind of deviation from that is frowned upon in the communities. And in fact, if you decide you don't want to go down either of those paths and you try and like take information from both sides and form your own perspective, you get insulted for being a centrist. What is the enlightened centrist there is no winning the only winning move is not to play that is what i feel the biggest problem is for the youth is forcing them to make these decisions where they have to play for one team or the other for their whole fucking life and then regardless and then of which to side you to go to you still get to see the members of the same community if you're somewhat out of line or thinking well, too hard kind of that's what i think the biggest problem is with growing up with social media and twitter constantly plaguing people's minds which in turn leads to everyone being miserable and mad at everything and everyone and I also think it lends itself to making everyone more isolated and lonely because then they lock themselves online constantly fighting battles for their ideology on Twitter with fucking random bot accounts and actual nonsense every hour of every day. So that, that would be my answer to what is actually plaguing the youth. Similar. Overall, and you can see it with the Fresh and Fit video that you still haven't corrected, where you called Fresh a virgin. A lot of it, and you see people that hate me, they're like, oh, this alpha male, oh, this alpha male, this alpha male Sneeko. And I've never once called myself that. I don't think I'm an alpha male. I advocate towards things that are conservative. I advocate towards Islamic values. That doesn't mean that I think I am an alpha male. I've never called you an alpha male. I, I've, you're you're, you're talking to someone. Consensus. Oh, you've called my friends that. You've called Fresh and Fit that. And you haven't they call them. When... They... You are really hung up on fighting for the honor of Fresh and Fit. What I did was exactly what you preach. I made fun of him. Calling him a virgin is a joke. Do I think he's actually a virgin? Probably not. 
and it's not even a good joke. Like, that's the laziest joke of all time, which is why it wasn't, like, the crux of it. I just made it as a throwaway statement in the middle of a rant about his ridiculous story. This is something that clearly weighs heavy on the mind of Sneeko, where I insulted his friend, and, my God, he has not let that go. It's become, like, his Vietnam, because it really seems to have taken a big toll on his psyche. He believes I owe a retraction and apology for making fun of him and calling out his story. What? And he says that I was wrong about all of it, even though, I'll play the clip in a moment, further in our conversation, he also admits he doesn't know if he actually fucked the three women that he claimed he did. Okay. Nobody knows the story itself is outrageous. What they proved is he had DMs, like a conversation with the NBA player, but that doesn't corroborate the whole story. There is no apology or retraction necessary. It is still such a mm, fucking crazy story know. he told that probably wouldn't even happen in the most obscure Brazzers porno ever. Because you don't correct your mistakes. You I were wrong about Fresh and Fit, you were wrong about Andrew Tate, and so, you were wrong about the movie Cuties. Okay. Well, I don't know about Cuties, but before we get back to that, how am I... I feel like I'm one of the very few people on the internet who corrects himself. Whenever I make a mistake, I do go and make a clarification. For example, I got something wrong with a content creator holding a stand-up competition that was absolute dog shit, and then someone came there and made fun of him, and I didn't know the full context. Once I got the full context, I went back and made a follow-up video to explain it in more depth with more clarity. I always do that. With Fresh and Fit, you really hung up on this idea that he fucked three women that night after meeting an NBA player at a bar and they exchanged Instagram information, and it turns out they were Eskimo bros with the same girl's pussy. Like, it's an outrageous story. Now, whether or not it's true, you haven't proved it either. Were you there watching him fuck? Were you he cheering verified on? it. He <laughs> the DMs with the basketball player. They that, the whole podcast verified the, the story. The DMs. The, 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 you, okay, so you didn't correct correct. that. They, they did verify the story. You didn't correct it. And did they have the basketball the player? Did they have the basketball player and the three girls he fucked come on and be like, oh my god, he absolutely plowed the shit out of me. It was the best sex of my life. Did, did he okay, have? That would be, I, that would never happen, but he did show the DMs with the basketball player verifying the story and that he did go to the party. Whether or not you want to believe he was with three women, I wasn't there either. I guess we're never going to know. But exactly. he did get the DMs with the basketball player. Uh, to add on to this, if there's even small Why elements of that story that are somewhat sense. true, I guarantee the whole thing is still embellished because the story he told is a work of fucking Tumblr fan fiction. It is not exactly how it played out under no universe, especially not for him. He is an extremely sensitive guy. He would probably have started crying after the first round of sex instead of going right to the next girl. Like, it is just not something that happened, and even if there is some elements of truth to the story, the whole thing is probably still not 100% accurate, and even still, the whole core of the video is the same, I was making fun of the guy. That would still stay entirely intact. Now, I'm getting carried away with Fresh and Fit here. The topic, the conversational topic here was about not correcting things that I've got wrong, and I've actually prided myself on being willing to accept when I'm wrong. I think that's one of the most important qualities a person can have in something that is very that's unfortunately true. absent from most people in the current day and age, where everyone has this complete reluctance and this like, ooh, yuckiness, I can't be wrong, I have to be perfect all the time attitude. I am more than willing to embrace and accept when I get things wrong, which is why I've made so many videos saying, I was wrong about this, got this wrong, this one was off, and adding more clarity to situations that I've covered when more information came out, or if something turned out to be fraudulent. I have done that for years, and I always have. In the case of Fresh and Fit, there is nothing to fucking correct. Now, I'm going a little out of order of our conversation because we kept bouncing back and forth between certain things fucking pinballing around, but I'm trying to connect all the points together, so we're gonna talk about the Andrew Tate thing in a moment. That's something we talked about for a little bit because Tate is very clearly someone that is a heavy influence okay. in Sneeko's life, but before then, I do want to focus on a couple other things we talked about, and that's him victimizing himself constantly. This is something I've called out, and I wanted to hear his perspective on it. A lot of the things you critique the woke for are ones that you actively partake in. Victimization, that's a big thing with the woke, right? Constantly playing the victim. Do you recognize how often you play the victim in terms of like, I'm being canceled, everyone's against me, you go on your Discord to talk more about it, even this morning talking and naming and shaming people that you think have slighted you as like a cancellation, you do the exact same things. But like you are also same That's not victimizing, that's actively pointing out that literally every single stream, every stream of the entire internet, all of YouTube, reacted to your video. I drop a response where I even apologize for going out of character and getting emotional, and then people... It's million views in 12 hours. Nobody watches my rattle. Some of them react to me and making me die in an animation, but nobody <laughs> wants to see what I have to say. I've become a caricature on YouTube rather than somebody who has something to say. It's, I've become a meme because I am banned. That's not victimizing. That's actively pointing out how strong censorship is and how people on mainstream platforms can run with the narrative when you're not there. The way you just justified it is a way many other people that you call playing the victim would also be able to justify things. The point is, when you are constantly whining and talking about how you're being attacked, it is still being victimized. I tried to point a mirror at him to point out that a lot of the things he criticizes other, others for is things that he actively does himself, and the one I focused on was victimization. Because the way he justifies, you know, playing the victim is justification people have used in the past that he calls out. So I was just trying to illustrate that it's not only hypocritical, but also just kind of silly that he... And with all of his beliefs, still plays the victim and whines so much on Twitter. But that point wasn't really landing. We just kept kind of going in a circle about that one. So I don't want to focus on it too much here. It's disingenuous. And now we're having the debate, but you would rather DM and go and make this about drama. Oh, let me go and react and do more drama content rather than have a conversation. But I never and did that. Doing it now. But I, you have to remember that I didn't start any of this. You reacted to me telling yeah. jokes about your friend and then had your audience tell me. And that went on for like two weeks. And so eventually it's I explained the, why I don't quiet. like you. And then when I did that, something. that was the only time I planned on talking about you. You went on stream with your gun to threaten me, and you kept it up for three months, adding me. I didn't do that to threaten you. That was a joke about clips. You, you actually think I was threatening you. Okay. I, whether you're or not you were. You're going to okay, say victimized, you're going to say victimized, you're going to say I'm actively trying to threaten you. He says so. Saying a clip joke on a stream. 
I don't think you were actually coming after my life. It doesn't change the fact that for three months you continued to carry it on. I wasn't reacting to you. I wasn't even talking about you. This was a quick point that I think he did see my side on. He likes to make the claim that I was farming him for views and AdSense money, which couldn't be further from the truth. I never wanted to talk about Sneeko. I never had plans of doing it. He kept poking and prodding me until I did. And then once I did, he wasn't happy that I was so mean in my response that for three months he did carry on this uh, very one-sided beef until once again, I decided to spit and play in the pig pen and I made a tweet firing back at him after months of not even mentioning him and then made a follow-up video. But it was never part of my agenda to do that. And I think after explaining it to him, he did see that he was really the instigator. And I am glad that he did have that, you know, realization after our conversation that he was willing to accept that. I, I think that is helpful nice. that he was open to seeing that, okay, maybe I was wrong. His intention wasn't drama AdSense farming. What do you think that I've said that I don't believe in? So for, we'll use our beef, for example. You think I'm weak for not taking you up on a boxing fight. But on the same side of that coin, you won't take Brandon Buckingham up on that boxing fight. The whole point was, I don't stand by my beliefs because I won't fight you for it. Well, with that perspective, why wouldn't you fight Brandon Buckingham when you feel so strongly about your beliefs yeah. and he says the same things I do? Wouldn't you want to prove because that you stand by? Because the first fight that I want to take would be against somebody, one, who has more clout than me, two, I it's disagree with ideo ideologically. I don't disagree with him ideologically at all. But he says I'm the totally same things I say about you. This, this person has been obsessed for a long time. He's suing me for emotional distress. Personally, I don't care about this person, and there's no benefit for me. Ah, to take for so then you believe somebody I challenge. So, so then you're, the reason I challenge, you I challenge Brandon fight. Twitter for challenging Hasanabi to a fight, one, because a lot Someone of people want to see that, he's more well known, he disagrees with me completely, there's a lot of tension for that fight. If I fought you, you have said a lot of things that are very negative about me, there's beef in the air, and you talk a lot about me, so things that you probably wouldn't say to my face, it would be an entertaining fight. But that's, again, that's not the point. The whole point is you think I am weak and you keep harping on this for not taking you up on the fight, but you won't take someone up on a fight that's saying the exact same things I am. So it seems like the beliefs, you don't stand by that strongly if you're not confident I you knew can that make you would never yeah. Charlie, Charlie, we both know you wouldn't accept the fight. Right, I made the that very was, clear. We both know. Even when I challenge you, we both know. It's to point out that a lot of people talk a lot of talk online and they never have to face the consequences okay. they stay in their room gaming all day. That was to point it out. Men are tired of seeing this back and forth internet drama. They want to see people go and settle it. I've never said a word about this person that you're bringing up. I haven't said a word about him since last summer. I won't say his name publicly again. I'm being sued for emotional stress. I'm leaving that alone. I have no problem with this person. You, we got going back and forth. We're going back and forth on Twitter. People want to see it. People are tired of these keyboard warriors going back and forth. That was to point out the fact that men should not feel so comfortable talking a lot of talk on Twitter that they would never say in person. You made claims of Brandon Buckingham being like a rapist and shit. Wouldn't that be something that you'd want to fight about at that point? Like, that I, was I, not a claim that I made. That was not a claim that I made. I can't remember the specifics of it, but you did toss out the word rapist when talking about Brandon Buckingham. I don't remember the context it was used in, but you did mention it, right? So why is all of a sudden that now beneath you? Like, you, you don't have any problems with him now after he's willing to fight. The point is, you're talking about you say these things and you don't have consequences well what about you you said these things he's trying to give you those consequences that you think are so important and you won't take him up on it yeah. there is a clear hypocrisy like that was that was something that was a different example the guy was a uh, previous fan just there's a lawsuit involved, so I can't talk about this too much, but that is not what I accuse him of. I do not think he is that word. I never said that about him, and that's a lie. He wants to do it because there's a there's an obsession going on, but that's irrelevant. Well, it, it's all tying back into the point I'm making, where the things that you preach against, you yourself embody. I'm not trying to use this as a gotcha moment, but I do think it's important to illustrate here that Sneeko is still denying this claim, even though there's tons and tons of video evidence where he does say that Brandon Buckingham was threatening to rape someone. He says it multiple times, mm -hmm. and that's what the lawsuit was about. But it doesn't prevent Sneeko from fighting Br Brandon Buckingham yes. if he was you know, well, to defending the beliefs and stuff, which is the point I was trying to make. I'm gonna R I'm gonna R word your girlfriend. Literally said that. And he said, I'm gonna R word your girlfriend, bro. This dude said he is going to R word my girlfriend. Bro, nothing warrants saying I'm gonna R word your girlfriend. Saying you're gonna R word my girlfriend? You said that? Yes. Word for word. I'm going to R word your girlfriend. Mm -hmm. okay, I'll just shit my word. Claiming that someone said they're going to rape someone is insinuating they are a rapist for making the threat. So this is just a point that I think he was way off the mark on because he did make these accusations against Brandon Buckingham. Your energy. $50 on a course from vetted millionaires or watching a gaming streamer for six hours every night. Well, he didn't use the course to get rich. He's getting rich from the course the same way that the course that you're selling is not like your main way that you made money. You are making money from that course now as opposed to what the course is teaching. But again, this is getting completely sidetracked. That, that's just not true. That's not my main source of income. I enjoy doing it, and it's a great way to have a network. And you talk about all the lonely men that are out there. What are you doing to go and help these people? We understand that there's a problem with loneliness of men. People get in there, they ask me questions about how do I network better? How do I find people who are like minded? You give them advice, and you can see them transform their life. I'm curious just to keep them, bro. Because game, you stream gaming for six hours. Is that a better solution to men who are lonely watching you play video games or giving advice mm, to men who don't know how to find a community of like minded people, game who don't know how to make money online, and want to live a lifestyle where look, I'm in Japan. Crypto, you know? the same room that I've seen you in since high school. I, I can go places. I choose not to. I'm happy here the same way you're happy traveling in Japan. Like, these are non-arguments that you're making. It's the same argument I've of- I've never seen what? you outside of your room. And, and, and I don't know how many years I've seen you on YouTube. I've never seen you out of your room. I've seen you with dildos in your room throwing uh -huh. at each other and your friends. I've never seen you travel. I've never seen you network with other people. I've never seen you show your audience what's possible if they make money as well. I've seen you play video games since like 2016. In one of the clips you showed of me, I am outside at Gasparilla with my girlfriend. What are you talking about?
We got into a little bit more of a heated argument about this point. I do still take great issue with Guru's charging for courses, much like Sneeko does with the creativity kit, and it's something he actually pitched a lot during our conversation. So it seems something that he strongly believes in. I don't know if that's because of the monetary gain he experiences from it, or if he truly believes it is something that's changing lives, but he did pitch it multiple that's times bad. because I pointed out that I don't like that kind of shit. It feels exploitative to people that are desperate and looking for anything, whether it's a sense of community or a sense of here's how to get successful like me, when really the success is built upon the people that pay for it, not what you're preaching. At least the majority of the time that's the case. And then he made the false claim about, you know, you don't showcase what's possible because you stay in your room a lot which i do stay in my room a lot but there is so much content on my channel where i'm outside of my room it's baffling that he'd even try and make that claim with a straight face and even in the number one thing he showed for me which is the picture of me and my girlfriend we are literally outside of a party mm. so it, it, i don't understand why he keeps making that claim that i don't leave my room or i'm only in the house but it is something that i fought him on and he did clearly see he was incorrect on so another thing he was willing to concede but still maintaining that courses like 50 dollars a month isn't a lot of money especially for the value he believes people get out of it and maybe I can only speak for everything I've ever seen, but I've never read or met someone who is successful because they bought a online guru's course. Mm. I only ever see or hear this about the people who lost so much more money than they ever had to spend because they are chasing this fucking hopium that's being peddled their way with these courses and guides. Now again, Sneekos might not be that. I haven't read it. I'm not 100% sure. But the vast majority of these guru courses are completely worthless scams. You're talking about things that are agreeable. And this is what I've said about Andrew Tate. He doesn't always say silly dumb shit, but he does. And he couples it with good real things. Like you mentioned, porn addiction is a problem. Like no one's going to disagree with that. But everything that you're sprinkling in outside of it is totally fucking irrelevant to the rest of it, man. You going and flexing on your audience isn't showing them what's possible. It's showing what's possible when they're paying for your lifestyle. The advice you give, you thrive off them staying miserable, right? The second they get happy, the second they get money, no, the second I, they, I definitely they, don't. they will not I be paying for your course if anymore. My audience, if my audience does not get value from my content, they're going to leave. The reality is that streamers and content creators like you, the audience always grows up. They watch a little bit of gaming content, then they grow up. They're not learning anything. And so they go to another content creator. They go to somebody else who's popular or trendy. You need to add value yeah, to the audience problem, so yeah. they are going to grow out of it. And the value, from, the, the value of most things in entertainment, what you used to do was humor interlaced with your stuff. Now it's just preaching to the choir of people that already subscribe to your hive mind. It's You're still doing no, the same thing. That's what you see on Twitter because that's the only mainstream platform that I'm still allowed to be on. If you watch my stream, I have watched the stream. When I watch my stream for four hours, it's not preaching. A lot of it's humor. My motto is seek truth through funny. Which I you've abandoned. What's going on in the world. You, you, it seems you've completely abandoned that. I have watched your streams. I have. A lot of it devolves into just talking again about the same things you always mention. Soy boys, bots, woke mind virus, and then dancing around. And then always trying to defend and find the other side of something controversial. It's the same formula over and over again because that's how you found to keep your audience hooked. It's no different than that's people that... I go on Omegle and I'm joking around for an hour or two hours. I bring on my viewers and we joke to each other. Yes. I bring on people real life people they sit next to me yes, and we turn around i have different podcasts i have different guests the I jokes that podcast you... with ryan dawson uncovering epstein and uncovering the truth about 9 11 which i really recommend that you go see to an alternative platform that's labeled as an alt-right conspiracy okay. website and still maintain the same audience you can't do that by repeating the same thing yeah, still you have to add some value. but you can that's the number one grift right now as long as you are contributing to an echo chamber the people will not leave you you form a reliance where they're constantly suckling your kit for ver like validation that their point of view is the right one and the more that you claim the victim the more that solidifies and cements them that that belief is the correct one because that's people are attacking not true at all. i've been talking about the woke mind bias for a long time and now my audience wants to get to know the truth so i've been interviewing different people i did a whole podcast uncovering epstein and who's actually on the client list because that's one big conspiracy theory that people want to know more about i did an entire podcast uncovering 9 11 and the iraq war and what happened and why war is created by deception yeah. i'm getting oh, no. into more things that's been been serious. They're gonna leave. admittedly i do feel bad doing one thing that i hate when other people do which is like he mentions box him into categories because it is very possible outside of all the content i've watched from him that he does other things now i have seen a lot of him i've watched quite a few streams now out of uh, curiosity since his big meltdown with the the whole dancing with the gun thing about our beef <clears throat> So I went on there and I did watch some of the streams from that point forward, but they always went the same way. But I do think it was unfair of me to try and box it in and say he's always doing the same thing when it is entirely possible that it's just my exposure to it and what I've seen so far. So I do completely concede that it is possible he does more and talk about more than just what I see on Twitter and the streams that I've seen. But it is worth mentioning later into this discussion, he boxes me in and says, all I do is sit in my room playing video games on stream for seven hours a day. So he is still guilty of the same thing he's accusing others of, which is a point I like to make, but he doesn't fully realize when I say it to him. But hopefully, you know, after our conversation, he does take a step back and recognize like, okay, I am guilty of a lot of the things I'm accusing others of but anyway that was a point that was kind of branching off from the core topic at, at this moment of the discussion which was courses i have no respect for people that are selling courses on like here's how you make money the number one way to make money guaranteed success you're gonna you know make it with this one give me this amount of money every month for my book i always find that to be exploitative shitty scummy and completely useless those kind of creators those kind of people they rely on desperation so let's think about this logically. Why would someone who's selling courses on happiness and how not to be lonely, how to get laid or how to make money, why would they actually want you to succeed? Because then they lose you as a customer. It is far more in their interest to keep you miserable to keep buying the product. And it is something a lot of them are guilty of doing. Now, I haven't seen Sneeko's creativity kit, so I can't say for sure if he is also guilty of it as well. Maybe he does try and offer legitimate advice and actually help people. It is possible, but that's not the case for the vast majority of them, which is why I always call it out as this is scummy, or at the very least, unnecessary. 
we live in a time where you have access to all the information you could ever want. You, you, can, you just need to search it up. You don't need to be paying people that you view as successful to learn their secrets. When those secrets they're revealing aren't what they used to get wealthy in the first place, it's selling you. When you are buying their product, you are filling their pro their pockets. It, that is the product, the, the book. Not what's in it, it's the book. They're making their money off your purchase of the book. They're not making their money off of the advice they've given you, at least not the majority of the time. And that's what I was trying to talk about here. What are your beliefs? What are, what are they? I don't know them. Can you tell so me what I feel, you believe in? Yeah, I feel like I've made my beliefs very clear. I am very firmly on the side of there are certain things, and it's going to be different for everyone, that make people happy. And the main thing I want is for people to be happy. I don't like that men are alone, which is why a lot of the advice I give is telling them to get out of their comfort zone and start with something like the gym. The gym is a very social environment. It's an environment where everyone's working towards similar goals. You immediately surround yourself with like-minded people, and maybe you make a connection at the gym. Maybe you can find a friend there. But even if you don't, you are out of your comfort zone in an environment where people are working for a similar goal. And that already changes your mindset as a person. You've given yourself a goal, you are acting on it, and now you're surrounded by people that are also in a similar boat. I think most importantly is I want people to be happy, and a lot of times they can't find that. So I don't think there's any Anything wrong with escapism like watching someone play a game or even playing games yourself watching a sport playing a sport yourself is also great i play pickup basketball every thursday getting out talking outside of a comfort zone instead of say, sitting online making twenty thousand tweets on the sneeko twitter i think is not productive replying to sneeko's twitter replying to my twitter none of it i think is productive i've had twitter since 2012 i've made 2600 tweets and half of those are just shit posts or a retweet i think all of that locking yourself inside as a recluse living in this completely toxic landscape like twitter is the most detrimental thing for a person and that extends to tiktok as well i think tiktok has absolutely ruined people's brains in terms of what they can even stomach as an attention span having to have like subway surfer underneath a video of someone talking because you can't focus long enough i think it's all a problem so the things i talk about are usually geared towards either entertaining yes, people for eight minutes a day or whatever or during a stream if they're already home from work and just need to unwind i think all of that is fine but i do always try and give some level of advice my background I'm, i don't know if you know i'm a human science graduate with a concentration in exercise physiology i believe very firmly in the mind body connection in terms of strength building and muscle building it, it's going to change your whole brain chemistry and it will help improve the way you're looking at the world so that's one of the big things i talk about is even if you're 100% comfortable with your body. There is no reason not to at least try to make these kind of differences and change your perspective on things. It, like, it doesn't even have to be a body issue. It helps your mind overall. I am always against people paying for advice from so-called gurus and professionals because you don't need it. The beauty of the internet is it is an unlimited repository of all of the human knowledge, just this compendium of every piece of information for every subject you could want. And you can access it for free. Under no circumstances do I ever advocate for someone paying up to $50 a month for advice they can freely find right now. Even if it doesn't come yeah, with a gamers always have the argument, but then they never talk about how college is a waste of time and that people go but and I, thousand dollars in debt from people who aren't vetted millionaires Back you can pay fifty dollars and talk to a vetted millionaire NPC. who's made money online in a way that they don't teach in school fifty dollars is a steal but people you get really upset about this because you're paying somebody directly and you know who you're spending the money on you don't get upset about college because you don't know the principal you don't know the headmaster you don't know the donors they're nameless people behind a university so the point of the network is is collection of information concentrated in one place and also the network of people that you can find right here i'm in japan traveling with somebody that i met from the creativity kit that's nope. something that is valuable and that you will only find by paying fifty dollars which is not a huge price that is a big price, but also, do you see what just happened there? That's, you win the price, that's the same price as your merch that you're using to advertise on this drama. Would you rather your audience pay $50 for a t-shirt from a gamer, or they meet somebody yeah, that they can go start a business with? Merch isn't $50 for a t-shirt, but regardless, what I want you to recognize is what happened there. I was talking... Okay, it's still not, but what just happened there is I was talking about something and you went into PR speak and salesman mode to talk about your course and you attributed something to me that I actually talk against. I actually have spoken many times about why college just isn't right for everybody. It's not, it simply isn't. I think college provides an invaluable social experience where for the first time in your life, you're on your own. So you learn how to fend for yourself. You learn how to interact with roommates, strangers. So you get social skills, but college is not going to be a great fit for everyone, especially when it comes to certain academia positions, especially like in some art fields. I actually talk a lot about that, but you keep lumping me in with this perception of a gamer and these beliefs that you don't know anything about me on. And yet you still put me in there you, and then, then you should probably make it more clear i do i've I, been personally watching videos for years and i had no idea about any of this so, i've seen you gaming i've seen your reactive drama content i didn't know that that was your method to make people happy which i think is a very is a narrow way of answering that question about what you believe in narrow. what your belief system is i was still but that's going. fine but i'm glad that you said that and i think that you should reiterate that more in your video to add more value add more value to your audience i've so you said you've watched for a long time these aren't secrets i made a video six years ago i just double checked i uploaded a video six years ago called you're getting fucked by college textbooks the entire video is about how college textbooks in particular are a massive scam and a very predatory system that universities are using i do talk about these things you are just not seeing them and then still putting words in my mouth. Uh, my beliefs, I think, are very clear to the people that watch. They're not a secret. They're not hidden. I make them very obvious. It was after this brief discussion here that the entire landscape of our conversation changed and it became very clear. Sneeko never knew anything about me to begin with. He keeps calling me a gamer. Okay. Gamer, gamer, gamer. Using the hard G on me. Gamer. And I think that yeah, might be that's the only content he ever watched. But I really don't think I've ever made a secret what my beliefs are. I talk about them on stream. I talk about them in videos. I've never been fearful of it. And yet Sneeko either pretends he never saw them or maybe he just legitimately never saw them but after explaining to him he really seemed to change his whole tone about me as a person i'm not a psychiatrist here or an expert in the field but if i had to wager a guess i think sneeko put an image of me in his head and attributed a whole ton of characteristics to that scarecrow that he put in there that just isn't actually me in reality and that's who he attacks so vehemently 
Whereas I do know a lot about Sneeko because there is a big difference yeah, between Chester and Bruno. Anyway. It's all the fuck he talks about. It's the only thing that ever leaves his mouth is always preaching about something or trying to make a big statement about their beliefs or their politics. Whereas that's not me. The main thing I focus on is just entertainment. My videos are made purely for fun. It's just because I thought it'd be entertaining. It's a silly topic. It's something fun. And that's it. There's never really anything too much deeper. Unless it's a topic I'm covering that I'm passionate about or I have something more I want to add on to about my own personal beliefs than I do. I'm never afraid to. But it's not all I talk about. Whereas for Sneeko and a lot of people in his circle, their main content is talking about what they believe. Whereas my main thing is just making entertaining shit. So maybe that's a core misunderstanding here because he clearly didn't really know much about me. Whereas I do know a lot about him since he is so open with everything. He wears his fucking heart on his sleeve. And I just disagree with a lot of it. But a big difference is I don't hate people that I disagree with on things. In fact, there is nobody in the world, not even my best friends, that I agree with on every issue, every time, and see eye to eye on everything. I don't like that anyway. I wouldn't want to have someone I agree with on everything. I think it's important to have different perspectives and different opinions. It's how you grow and it's how you learn as well. So I don't get mad when people disagree with me or have different things that I don't agree with. That doesn't piss me off. But for Sneeko, it clearly has. And he really didn't even know anything about me to begin with here until after our conversation. Now, I know I'm cutting up our conversation quite a bit here, but I'm just trying to focus on like the big chunk topics that we tackled. One of them that we did touch on quite a bit and got pretty passionate about is gaming. And like, mm -hmm. Sneeko firmly believes that people that are gaming or watching sports are wasting their time. It can be wow. valueless. Entertainment like that has no value whatsoever. And I kept trying to point out that there's nothing wrong that's with that's wrong. Like watching sports, watching movies, watching streams, playing games. All that's fine in moderation. But Sneeko only views it through one lens, which is excess. Mm -hmm. Excess. Uh, obsession, addiction where all they do is watch sports, play games, do this and that. And then, of course, it is very detrimental, and it is bad for overall health. I I'm not going to bother showing clips from that, because that one just really went in circles. Uh, I think there's just a fundamental disagreement there, where Sneeko believes anything that's entertainment-driven is just not worth it, and time could always be spent better than anything else. But then he puts his content on a pedestal that's an exception to his rule, where, no, this content that I make is the one that's valuable. Everything else is worthless. This is the value. This, you know, four hours, five hours of Rumble streaming and, you know, whatever's okay. going on over there, that's a good use of time, and all the other streams, like gaming and all oh. that, is terrible. So it's... That got really muddy and messy, and there wasn't really any way we met somewhere uh, and like had a, a perspective that made sense to each other, because his stream is just as much guilty of being a waste of time by his definition as my stream playing a game. It's still a form of entertainment and escapism, no matter how you spin it. I don't see how your message is somehow bolstered by spamming slurs, for example, like during that stream with the gun. I couldn't listen to you because you kept saying slurs. How is that necessarily helping make people happy or positive in any way, shape, or form? What does that do to contribute to your overall goal? Because it's not humor either, so it's not seeking truth through funny. It's literally just spamming slurs because you were mad at me. It is The reason that it's funny is because I'm on a platform that has free speech, and you're not bound by wokeness where you can't say certain words and you're labeled racist or homophobic or transphobic, yeah, where boy. you can say things even if you don't mean them because we're not trapped with words. But why say, something you don't, why, why say something you don't mean, though? What, what does that do? Wouldn't that go against your ideology where you're, like, faking it? That's not a word. A word doesn't encourage. A word doesn't encompass a whole belief system. A word can be funny. The word faggot is funny. That was the funniest thing you said this whole debate. <laughs> I, 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 I don't understand. Now, well, because it's just an, outra it's an outrageous claim. It's, it's like talking to a child. Well, no, like, my point. It's no, outrageous. it's funny. Your defense of it. First time we laughed this whole time. First well, time we laughed this whole, this whole thing. This is the one little word. <laughs> yes, because it's such a silly defense of it. It's like it's like a child who hears fuck for the first time. He's like, woo, daddy said fuck. Like things started to go a little goofy mode here, a little <laughs> Waco style. So the slurs is something I've mentioned. I couldn't watch him on stream because he just kept saying this the guy. slur. And my point here was, why? It doesn't really accomplish anything for his goals or anything like that. He's just spamming slurs, which makes it sound like he's just mad at me and trying to choose the worst words he can think of. Now, looking back on it, I do regret not pushing a bit more on this point because there was a lot I wanted to say on it, but I just got so thrown off and blown away by his explanation of all of it that I totally forgot to expand. Because he really only says the F slur, the homophobic slur. And he says it doesn't encompass a whole belief system. Okay, well then why is it only that slur? I, I don't think I've ever heard him start spamming the N-word, hard R or anything like that. And he's very open about how much he appreciates the Islamic faith. I've never heard him use any slurs against Muslims or anything like that. So if you feel so strongly that words don't necessarily indicate your actual beliefs, then why aren't you using more slurs? Why don't you drop more racist slurs during your stream? Why is the only one you use the F slur? If this is really how you feel about those words, then why aren't you using all of the other slurs? If they don't mean anything, and you feel so comfortable with Rumble allowing you to use the F slur so loosey-goosey, why is it only that one? Why not every slur? I, I'm, I'm just curious if there's like a tier list of slurs for you. I would have liked to ask more on that, but I guess I'll do it now. In, which it seems like you can recognize. Do you believe that, do you believe that Andrew and Tristan are innocent? That I don't know. They could be, and I've said that from the start. You don't, I, you don't have a belief on that? Well, because I don't have the evidence. They've been charged twice yeah. with the human trafficking, but none of the you evidence... Didn't look at all the, you didn't look at all the victims and their allegations and how I, everything was exposed on WhatsApp, how they plan to make a Netflix movie out of this. I, I have seen that comes. But then, uh, if you cover current events, this is something you jump onto the pizza box, but you don't take the time to go and look at all the evidence that was debunked. That's not true, though. Because like, why, why, why do you spend the narrative laughing at somebody falsely in prison, but you can't go and just look at a couple screenshots and see that as garbage? You're laughing at the pizza box putting two people in jail because of what you saw on Twitter. When I say the word faggot or I say a slur, it's just a funny word to say. There's no consequences for that. Nobody goes to jail falsely. I have looked at the evidence from both sides. I always do. I don't just 
go to these tribes and just assume everything on my side is right and everything on that side is wrong. I take information from all angles in order to find where I personally sit on this perspective on this situation. So, for the Tate brothers, being charged twice with human trafficking, mm -hmm. while there is some shady there is still some... real merit to some of the things that people were talking about, such as something you talked about as well. The taking of the passports from some of the women and getting there under the guise that they would be able to date them. Those are very odd, very peculiar things. So it's not like it's just Oh, all of that's wrong and we have to disregard all of it because this is here. There is, on both sides here, evidence that makes it a very complicated case, which is why it's gone on for so long, right? It's not one where I know the answer. They could be innocent, they could be guilty. I do think it's weird they've now been charged twice. But there, there is some very odd things there because that's not exactly a light thing to come after someone for. And there is things that you, you have talked about. that people can go to jail for four months without any evidence yes. of charges? Yes, and I, even outside of the Tates, I have said that in this country, where you can go to jail on suspicion of things without ever being charged. It's a problem. Yes, it is a problem. Okay. I didn't see that video. I saw the video laughing about the pizza box putting in jail. Did right. you make a video about that? Yes, and I talked. Well, it's in, the, yeah. it's in that video where I say I don't know if he's guilty. I don't like if there's real victims here. Like I never celebrate someone being a human trafficker because there's victims. I didn't. I wouldn't celebrate him being a human trafficker. That means there are real victims there. Even though I disagree with like his hustlers university and a lot of the dumb shit he says, I wouldn't want him to be a human trafficker. That means there are real victims being in terrible situations. I did say that, and I don't know if he's guilty. I don't know if he's innocent. Nobody does right now, except for them and whatever's going on in Romania. The joking about a pizza box is things I make about anything that has greatness around it. Like the Gwyneth Paltrow trial. There's so much silliness there that I talk about, but at the end of the day, I don't know who's innocent or guilty. I'm joking about the goofiness of things that have come up. Right? All right, yeah, I gotta get going. Now, he mentioned Andrew Tate, and this is another thing. Andrew Tate is very clearly an important figure in Sneeko's life. And I made two videos covering Andrew Tate, one of them joking about Hustlers University and just a lot of the silly things that he's done, and the other when he got arrested. So, let's talk about that. I have always maintained that Andrew Tate is a very entertaining clown most of the time, but much like a lot of personalities online, especially ones that sell courses, he has to sprinkle in very agreeable things with some of his rants. So he has good things that he actually will say, especially in terms of like men and their loneliness, and how working out is extremely beneficial to helping with mentality and just general overall mood and well-being. So he does say agreeable things that I've always said he has and, uh, done a decent job of with those certain topics. But on the whole, most of the things he says are just outrageous there. nonsense about like, how he doesn't watch Star Wars and that's why he gets pussy and has expensive cars or why books are stupid. Like, th there's what? a lot of silliness there and Hustlers University, I have always maintained, is completely exploitative of desperate men. So yes, I have made jokes about Andrew Tate. I am not their biggest fan. Now, when I did cover the arrest, I did mention the pizza box theory. At the time, that was reported by multiple outlets as a very real possibility that led to his arrest. So at the time I did report on it, I did say it seems, talking about like this being the speculation as to why they finally pursued him now, but yes, I do understand that that was heavily disputed after the fact a, a couple days later. But I did talk about it and joke about the pizza box thing, which made Sneeko in particular very very upset, thinking that I was laughing at two men falsely imprisoned, which I've never laughed about. I've laughed about the idea of Andrew Tate and Tristan Tate being thrown in jail because of pizza boxes. I've also laughed and made jokes about some of the tweets that Andrew has made while in jail, such as talking about practicing his dragon karate fist that would break through every known metal on earth to fucking shatter tungsten or whatever. And yeah, I've joked about the tweet where he's talking about like ghosts that he's killed, making himself sound like the goddamn paranormal firing squad out mm -hmm. there, keeping the halls of the prison safe from ghouls and spirits. And while I made jokes at the idea of a pizza that. box leading to prison time, it wasn't the actual core idea of two innocent men potentially being in jail that gave me a big hearty belly laugh or anything like that it was the outrageous circumstances surrounding it i don't know if they're guilty as i said in the video i don't know if they are i do find it weird that they've been charged with the same thing twice with multiple raids now but at the end of the day if they're innocent i don't want to see them in jail the reasoning for keeping them in jail was like a potential flight risk like leaving the country so that, i guess that was the explanation for it but i have talked in the past about being imprisoned with no charges as being something i don't fucking agree with which isn't a controversial take so it, all of these things that sneeko attributed to me were things that i didn't actually believe or in my opinion do Talking about the pizza box thing the day that it happened wasn't outlandish. It wasn't until a couple of days later where that was more debunked and heavily scrutinized. But even then, I still talked about it more of like a silly idea if this was the case. And the jokes I made about Andrew Tate were mainly about the response to Andrew Tate going to jail. Like some of the unhinged tweets about how, well, if it's true, human trafficking is not really that big of a deal anyway, so it's still bullshit. Mm -hmm. not that big of a charge, which is still a crazy thing to say. The whole thing was never really about whether or not he truly was guilty or innocent, because I don't know. I still don't know. Nobody still knows because yeah. it's still an ongoing investigation. Yeah, so he did sense. talk about that. He did see where I was coming from, and I was appreciative that he was willing to hear so I stand on all of that. And I do think that we uh, came to understand each other's perspective on it. Getting towards the end of our conversation, we started talking once again about one of the things that I really tried to drive home and help, hope to have some kind of breakthrough on the way that he perceives jokes and insults. Like, and trying to find what his line was. Because he calls a lot of things hit pieces, like when Willie Mac makes a video breaking down like a lot of Sneeko's most baffling moments or like really big L's. Willie Mac will point him out and make jokes about it. That's not cancellation to me, but to Sneeko it is. And I kept trying to get to the bottom of that, and we did have more discussion on it, but I don't think we ever really reached a, a ground where I like agreed with him on his definition of like what canceling is versus what joking is so like meat canyon he mentions he had no problem with he had a good sense of humor about it and found them to be enjoyable like that's great but then why doesn't that same thing extend to someone who also still makes joke about jokes about it like willie mac did when i really just feel like it's the same thing there is deplatforming advocating for deplatforming and then there's just insulting someone and i haven't seen a ton of people advocating for sneeko to be deplatformed aside from a couple of very rare instances of that the rest i see as people just dunking on him the same way that he dunks on people he doesn't like so we did just keep going in circles around that for like another 20 minutes so i don't really think there's any reason to show too much of that 
that. But I would like to get you to our closing statements, and then something crazy happened at the very end. Look at the way that people who are telling the truth get painted as. They get painted as these insults like incel, virgin, loser, racist, misogynist. They, they try to box you in instead of instead of tell the truth about you because I, I think that they don't like what you're talking about. But I would like for us to have another conversation in the future. I like that you have a, a good message about how people should be happy. I like that you're advocating for the gym and you're playing basketball and you're telling people to get out of their comfort zone. I think that those are all really good things. And I do think that you're funny. I, I can't deny about that. Like it's a little monotone, but uh, you know you're funny, guys. But I do appreciate the conversation. Nice. After our conversation, there really wasn't a ton of hostility left. I really feel like Sneeko built me up very differently in his head to paint me as a villain in his own mind. And the reality is I just didn't match that description. Now, for me, I did know a lot about Sneeko, but after talking to him, I feel like a large part of that is a persona that he's putting on. The way he conducted them, himself in this conversation, I was actually really surprised with. He was much more calm. It, like, he is still very passionate, clearly, but he's not having a fucking conniption and a meltdown like I've seen him do so many times in the past. So I do feel like it was a productive conversation, and there are just things that I will always disagree with him on. I'm not seeing eye-to-eye -eye with a lot of the things he talks about, and that's just the reality of it. And it's that way with a lot of people. Like I said, there's no one in the world I see eye-to-eye -eye on with everything. But there are very big disagreements between us in terms of things that we feel, and things that we believe. And after talking to him, it really seems like he himself got lost in his own sauce, and he did talk about, like, trying to change his approach to things to deliver a more positive message. And that makes me pretty interested to see where he takes that like if he truly does have a, a positive message he wants to spread he did recognize that he hadn't been doing a super effective job of it uh, as of the time of this conversation and wanted to work on ways of rectifying that i'm very curious to see how he goes about it and if he truly was being genuine so the conversation i do think was a pretty fascinating and important one to have and one thing that happened that i still can't believe is real is during our conversation people came up to him to talk to him and, and me as well during this it, it comes from a place of hope yeah. and of jealousy because they see people who are living a lifestyle opposite of them and instead of admitting that there's a different path or admitting that they could have a good point they try to bring down their character that's the common theme i see with these people so the intentions that i see from these people in the collage they're not pure they're not good it's jealousy and it's hate and again that is still something they could say about you as well it, that, that's just one of the things that's i was fair, and that's, fair, and that's why you you made me realize that i need to this whole paper date on sneak in the recent weeks i'm going to repurpose my message now i'm not gonna what i meant you know, do you know uh moist critical okay. hey, say what's up to him right now we're shit worried we're saying hi yeah yeah hey hey, hey, hey. hey look <laughs> Okay. I saw you on Twitter. That's all I'm just saying. Yeah. Hey. Okay, uh, that's awesome. Travel in the world right now. Cool, man. Um, Moise, uh, video? Yeah, we saw me. What did you think of the Me Kenya video? <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty funny. Yeah. Hey, Charlie. What's up, man? It was hey, funny. How's it we going, man? About it. Cool. Hey, yeah. Charlie. We squashed the beef. Oh, that's awesome, dude. Yeah. I've been, yeah, awesome. I've been actually hard uh, to talk to you. Uh, it's funny. I think that's a good way to end it on. Um, hope we could talk again in the future. Okay. I don't think we should have beef. And yeah, you did. I, I, I want to thank you for... Uh, for starting that whole Sneeko hate brigade because it's like, yeah, you know what? Maybe I am um, guilty of doing the same things that I am mad about. And I, I do attribute a lot of that to, to being canceled and a lot of resentment about that. Mm -hmm. But okay, I have okay. to spread positivity now and then not engage I in the same that. type of behavior that I criticize. Yeah, you're right about that. So I'm just going to go and, you know, I'm not going to go attack mode anymore. I, I don't think that there's, there's any value to that. It's just going to come back to me. Well, I actually really appreciate the conversation, man. It's nice to it's nice to hear like a more human side of you outside of like, you know, what I see on Twitter or Rumble. I actually do think this was a very valuable conversation. So I appreciate you taking oh! I really appreciate you taking the time to have a bit of a call with me about it. Yeah, thanks, man. And uh, mags, not clips. Yeah, from now on, bro, if you're going to be talking about guns, get the terminology right. you very much offended me with that one. Sentence. Yeah, then on a big note, it's a separate conversation. That's what's going on with the